enough yet. I'll stop you. I'm ready when you are. Hello and welcome to another special episode of Superhero Club, your go-to show all about comic book inspired original series on Prime Video. I'm your host Stephanie Williams. Before we get too far in, if you want more superhero content like this, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Prime Video channel. Today we are highlighting Omni-Man, also known as Nolan Grayson, a powerful Viltrumite who isn't exactly the hero we all thought him to be. First we'll dive into some of his comic history, then we'll examine how that compares to the Omni-Man introduced in the Invincible animated series. Let's start by covering Nolan Grayson aka Omni-Man's origin in the comics. He is an alien Viltrumite and the son of their leader. He had a bit of a dramatic start. He was born on Viltrum and his life took a sharp turn when a dissenting Viltrumite assassinated his father. Too young to remember any of this, Nolan's true origins were shrouded in secrecy to protect him from his enemies on Viltrum. The Viltrumites now under Thrag's iron-fisted rule reorganized into the formidable Viltrum Empire. Young and ambitious, Nolan quickly rose through the ranks carving out a name for himself as a ruthless planet conqueror but with their numbers decimated by a vicious virus the Viltrumites shift the gear. Their new plan? Infiltrate and weaken societies from within playing the long game thanks to their extended lifespans. Nolan was dispatched to Earth for this very mission. Posing as a human he adopted the last name Grayson and dove headfirst into understanding Earth's culture. He met and married Debbie, and together they had a son, Mark. Meanwhile, Cecil Stedman, a key Earth figure, crafted the perfect cover for Nolan, Omni-Man, Earth's most formidable superhero. As Omni-Man, Nolan battled Earth's supervillains and crossed paths with the Guardians of the Globe, the elite superhero squad. He forged a partnership with them, but kept his distance by not becoming a full member. He further established himself as a superhero on Earth by befriending Art Rosenbaum, the go-to costume designer for superheroes who crafted his iconic Omni-Man suit. However, Nolan's life on Earth was built on a foundation of lies. His friends, including Art, Cecil, and even his wife Debbie, were fed a fabricated story about his earthly present. Nolan's double life as a loving family man while secretly being a covert agent of the Viltrum Empire sets the stage for a complex and entangled existence. Now that we've covered Nolan's backstory, let's get into some of Omni-Man's appearances in the Invincible comics up until issue 30 of the series. Omni-Man first appears in the Invincible comic series in issue number one as Nolan Grayson, a Viltrumite posing as a superhero on Earth and father to Mark Grayson aka Invincible. Omni-Man is quickly established as a powerful and experienced hero, guiding Mark as he steps into his role as Invincible when his powers finally kick in. Nolan is secretly watching nearby as Mark takes on criminals for the first time. In this moment he makes his presence known to Mark and we see Nolan as a proud dad seeing that his son could use a little help in the costume department. He takes Mark to Art, the same guy who made his suit. In issue number two, a flashback happens in the first few pages featuring Nolan sharing his origin story with the young Mark. An origin we all know will be revealed as a lie later in the comic series. It's an endearing tale but there are early hints that Omni-Man has more complexity and darkness than initially apparent well before we get to what he does to the Guardians of the Globe. In Invincible number three, Omni-Man and Invincible take on alien invaders called the Flaxons. The Flaxons don't last long against Invincible and Omni-Man and they begin quickly retreating but Omni-Man isn't letting them off the hook that easily. Omni-Man starts to get out of hand with how much he is beating the hell out of the Flaxons who unfortunately were too slow to escape back through their portal. It's so violent Invincible has to tell his dad to chill out. Later Omni-Man is abducted by the Flaxons and taken prisoner. They manage to neutralize his powers but then Omni-Man eventually regains his powers in a dramatic turnaround and spearheads a revolt wreaking havoc across the dimension. After eight relentless months in the Flaxon realm, he bursts into the world and vividly recounts the ordeal to Mark and Debbie. In a shocking turn of events, Omni-Man brutally murders the Guardians of the Globe in issue number seven. This is after deciding to put his true plans in motion. The murderous act marks a significant shift in the series, revealing Omni-Man's true allegiance to the Viltrumite Empire. 
It's a pivotal moment that shatters the image of the benevolent hero he had portrayed up until this point. In the very next issue, Nolan faces interrogation by Damien Darkblood, demon detective, who is listing suspects in the murder of the Guardians, which includes Black Samson. To Nolan's credit, he does what he can to squash any indication that it could have been Black Samson, even though there's a chance that could have shifted the focus of his role in the Guardians' demise. Here we see a little bit more Omni-Man's complex personality when he's a little Little torn between his Viltrumite duties and his role as father. He attends the funeral for the Guardians, an event disrupted by Black Samson's butler, Sanford, who Nolan effortlessly subdues before returning home with Mark. At home, he wrestles with his dual identities, pondering over the perfect birthday plan for Mark and Debbie. Later, Nolan joins Mark for a movie, a brief break amidst his internal conflict. But the struggle continues the next day. In solitude, Nolan rehearses the reveal of his true Viltrumite origins to Mark, and there's frustration that mounts with each attempt. The moment of truth arrives in the kitchen. Still unaware of the gravity of his father's internal battle, Mark refuses to listen, leaving Nolan stranded at the crossroads of paternal love and Viltrumite obligation. It's not until issue number 10 that the truth inevitably comes out. Thanks to the immortal coming back to life and confronting Nolan during a televised breaking news moment. And in that moment of chaos and revelation, Nolan, in his Omni-Man persona, heroically saves Carnival Gores from a monstrous threat. However, his efforts are abruptly interrupted by the immortal, whom Nolan had previously slain but was brought back to life by the Mauler twins. As Omni-Man clashes with the immortal, Invincible arrives, witnessing his father's brutal strength Amidst the wreckage, father and son finally have the big conversation. Omni-Man reveals the shocking truth of his Viltrumite origin. He talks about the Viltrumite race's ruthless pursuit of a perfect society, attained by exterminating the weak and rewarding those like himself for their conquests. With cold conviction, Omni-Man invites his son to join him in his mission to dominate Earth. Omni-Man lays bare a harsh reality, stating that Invincible will outlive anyone he's ever loved destined for a life spanning thousands of years in loneliness. However, defiant and protective of Earth, Invincible refuses to comply. What follows is a devastating father-son duel, where Omni-Man's punches send Invincible crashing through buildings, resulting in catastrophic casualties. As their argument intensifies, Omni-Man callously says that Debbie, Invincible's mother, means nothing to him. Invincible, driven by love and disbelief, accuses him of lying. Omni-Man, unyielding, insists he is finally revealing the truth. The battle escalates with Omni-Man brutally pummeling Invincible across the globe, mocking his son's future of enduring solitude. In a pivotal moment, Omni-Man asks Invincible what he would have after centuries to which Invincible responds, I'll still have you, Dad. This admission strikes a chord in Omni-Man, poised to deliver a fatal blow he hesitates, visibly shaken. In an unexpected turn of heart, Omni-Man spares his son, fleeing into space, tears streaming down his face as the weight of Invincible's words and his own actions bear down on him. This departure leaves a lasting impact on Invincible and the superhero community at large, forcing them to deal with the consequences of Omni-Man's actions. When we catch up with Omni-Man after issue number 25, he is struggling between his love for Mark and his duty to the Viltrum Empire, and he chooses an alternative path. After being unable to kill his son, Omni-Man set his sights on conquering another planet, Thraxa, in an attempt to mitigate the consequences of his desertion. Upon arrival, Omni-Man quickly ascends to the role of ruler, exploiting the Thraxans' respect for how long he can live as they only live nine months, and therefore the oldest governs. Omni-Man sends a Thraxan to Earth to bring Invisible to him. Their reunion on Thraxa is tense, Fists are clenched in anticipation of conflict, but it dissolves into an emotional embrace. Invincible urges Omni-Man to return to Earth, but Omni-Man, burdened by his past actions, feels bound to Thraxa. In his private chambers, Invincible confronts Omni-Man, testing if he's really his father or a Thraxan imposter. Omni-Man then reveals his new life with a mate named Andressa and a child whose purple skin marks him as a target for Viltrum purists. Omni-Man admits Earth changed him and seeks his son's help in protecting Thraxa from an impending Viltrum attack. As the Viltrumites descend on Thraxa, Omni-Man entrusts Invincible with Andressa and his son's safety. 
In the ensuing chaos, Omni-Man confronts Lucan, a Viltrumite believing he killed him. Meanwhile, other Viltrumites mercilessly slaughter the Thraxans, igniting Omni-Man's fury. In a desperate battle, Omni-Man and Invincible team up against the Viltrumite invaders. Just when victory seems within grasp, Lucan surprisingly alive, ambushes Omni-Man, breaking his spine. As Omni-Man falls into the Viltrumite's captivity, his final request to Invincible is for him to read his father's books, leaving behind a legacy of knowledge and perhaps a glimpse into his conflicted soul. It's kind of like how you walk and you don't think about balancing anymore. But when you were a baby, you did. You're a baby flyer right now. You have to focus on staying upright. Focus on going the direction you want to go. Understand? Yeah, I, I think I got it. All right, we'll put a pin into Omni-Man's comic book deep dive, but we promise to revisit again later. For now, we will move on to the version of Omni-Man we met in the Invincible animated series. Not much changes for the Omni-Man we get to know in the Invincible animated series. Like in the comics, he is still Nolan, who has a destiny marked by power and secrecy. Born on a planet ruled by the supremely powerful Viltrumites, known for their supremacy and conquest, his early life was shaped by loss and war. As the Viltrumites evolved their strategy for galactic domination, Nolan was handpicked for a critical mission to infiltrate and weaken a planet from within. Earth was his target. Assuming the identity of Nolan Grayson, a novelist on Earth, he masked his true agenda behind the facade of a superhero known as Omni-Man. He falls in love with a woman named Debbie and they have a son together named Mark. While he works closely with Earth's revered superhero team, the Guardians of the Globe, he intriguingly refuses official membership, maintaining an air of mystery. Over time, his heroic deeds solidify his reputation as a legendary figure, his true Viltrumite nature hidden in plain sight. Nolan makes his debut in episode 1 of season 1, arriving on the scene to assist the Guardians of the Globe in fighting the Mauler twins who are busy trying to kidnap the President of the United States. It's quite obvious there is no love loss between Omni-Man and the Immortal, which will come into play again later in the series. The rest of the episode is leading up to the infamous annihilation of the Guardians of the Globe at the hands of Omni-Man by focusing on him and his relationship with Mark and Debbie. Those relationships are marked by a blend of warmth, tension, and complex dynamics. Nolan's interaction with his family are tinged with the dualities of his character, being both a caring father and husband and a Viltrumite with a hidden agenda. When Nolan returns home from his superhero duties, a casual intimate interaction with Debbie indicates a deep established relationship. However, when their conversation turns toward their trip to Berlin, it reveals a sense of the mundane even though their lives are nowhere near normal compared to others. Then there is Mark's display of discomfort with his parents' intimacy and his eagerness to embrace his emerging powers. This version of Nolan is heartwarming, but the true Nolan, aka Omni-Man, begins to show as the episode progresses. Omni-Man's approach to Mark's training as Invincible is a critical aspect of their relationship. He oscillates between being a supportive father and a demanding trainer, embodying the Viltrumite ethos of strength and resilience. His training methods, while harsh, reflect his desire to prepare Mark for the brutal realities of their powers. This tough love approach causes friction with Debbie, who is more concerned about the emotional and physical toll on Mark. Nolan's frustrations toward Mark reveals his internal conflict torn between his Viltrumite duties and his familial bonds, which continue to unravel as the season progresses and is definitely evident when Omni-Man murders the Guardians of the Globe at the end of the episode. Omni-Man is left comatose for most of episode 2 after annihilating the Guardians, but when he finally wakes up, his urgency to get Mark up to speed in training is obvious. The strain in their relationship is shown while they train together. Omni-Man punches his son to prove a point, but it doesn't go the way he thought it would. Nolan also lies to Cecil when asked what happened the day the Guardians were killed. Omni-Man is as manipulative as he is strong, and he takes his frustrations and anger out on the Flaxons. It's here we get to see what we didn't in the comics, instead of being taken prisoner and his powers being nullified like in the comics, in the series Omni-Man lays waste to the entire Flaxen homeworld after informing them that Earth was not theirs to conquer. In episode 3, Omni-Man gives a eulogy for the Guardians of the Globe in a public ceremony. The eulogy includes him telling the world that he will continue to defend them as well as the new heroes. Later, during the private ceremony held for the Guardians, Nolan is confronted by Damien Darkblood who suspects him as the killer. From here on out, Nolan 
Roland does what he can to act as though things are normal and he is still the loving and caring husband and father Debbie and Mark have known him to be all this time but that soon begins to crumble too. Try as he may, Nolan is unable to convince Damien Darkblood that he isn't the one at fault for the death of the Guardians. As a result, Damien does what he can to fuel the suspicions Debbie already has towards her husband. There is a tense family scene in which Nolan grapples with Mark volunteering for a space mission, emphasizing the gravity of his son's growing responsibilities. Debbie, though concerned about school, agrees the mission is important. Nolan's emphasis on education clashes with Mark's enthusiasm, but Debbie reminds Mark that choosing to use his powers is his alone. Nolan and Debbie's relationship continues to strain under Nolan's changed behavior since Mark gained his powers. Omni-Man grows distant and secretive. During a dinner in Rome, the couple reminisce about their past, revealing Nolan's initial earthling experiences and Debbie's initial skepticism of him. The conversation turns serious as Nolan admits to not being fully honest about the Guardian's murder a confession that deepens Debbie's unease. Upon Mark's return from Earth, he walks into the awkward and tense home highlighting the growing secrets and challenges in their family life. In a later conversation, Debbie shares her professional successes with Nolan, who informs her of Cecil's rare apology stemming from new evidence about the murder of the Guardians. Episode 5 delves deeper into the simmering tension between Nolan and Mark, capturing a pivotal moment in their strained relationship. Mark, ever the idealistic hero, confides in his father about his plan to assist Titan, a criminal seeking liberation from the clutches of Machine Head. However, Titan's story doesn't seem genuine or sit well with Nolan, and a stern fatherly tone he advises Mark against the endeavor, emphasizing the potential dangers and pitfalls of such a misguided alliance. However, Mark, driven by the strong sense of justice and the desire to do good, defies Nolan's warning. As Mark faces a brutal onslaught from Machine Head's formidable goons, the scene shifts to Omni-Man, Nolan's superhero alter ego, ominously observing from a distance. In a chilling display of detachment, Omni-Man chooses not to intervene, allowing Mark to endure the beatdown alone. This moment starkly illustrates the growing rift between father and son. Nolan's decision to remain a passive spectator in the face of his son's crisis speaks volumes about the complexities of their relationship marked by conflicting ideologies and a deepening divide that comes to a head by the time we get to the end of the season. Nolan's facade continues to crumble in episode 6 when Debbie finally asks him why he killed the Guardians which he denies. He tells her she's drunk and she throws a bottle of wine at him. When Debbie tells Nolan where he go and not so loving words, he breaks the bottle of wine and punches a hole through the wall. Things continue to escalate and go downhill well into episode 7 when Debbie asks Nolan why he kept the suit he murdered the Guardians in. Nolan is still trying to hold on to his lies and tells her that Damien Darkblood planted the suit to frame him, but Debbie doesn't buy it. He then asks her to trust him and leaves. Omni-Man knows his time as Nolan Grayson is up and tries to practice the conversation he plans on having with his son Invincible. When Nolan starts his aggressive search for Mark, it sets off a chain of violent events. It it begins with a forceful encounter with the GDA agents and culminates in the grim killing of Donald who expresses his final moments that it was an honor to work for Cecil at the GDA. Nolan discovers the GDA is surveilling his family and his wrath intensifies leading to a brutal showdown. The tension peaks during a charged confrontation with Cecil who dares to question Nolan about the murder of the Guardians. Nolan's cold and dismissive responses starkly highlights the deep fracturing between his Viltrumite heritage and his life on Earth. Nolan's path of destruction continues as he viciously battles Sinclair's cyborgs and another monstrous creation, showcasing his raw power and ferocity. Those intense battles broadcast live expose the world to the full extent of Nolan's rage and strength. In the climax of the season, Mark joins Nolan in a brutal battle, only to witness Nolan's savage execution of the immortal. This ruthless display forces Mark to face the harsh reality of his father's nature. Nolan then unveils the Viltrumite Empire's grand plan and his expectation for Mark's allegiance. Mark's defiance leads to the fierce altercation, climaxing in a poignant moment where Mark's expression of familiar love momentarily pierces Nolan's resolve. Torn between his Viltrumite mission and his love for Mark, Nolan, engulfed in emotional conflict, abandons Earth, leaving a legacy of destruction and a deeply fractured identity.
When we catch up with Omni-Man in season two, we find that he has gone on his own kind of interstellar eat, pray, love type journey, which is similar to what we saw in the comic book depiction. Omni-Man travels across the cosmos, marked by his growing beard and introspection. His adventure takes a dramatic turn when he rescues passengers from a spacecraft near a black hole, earning him the title of monarch on a distant planet and leading to a new family. Meanwhile, a Thraxon is sent to Earth to find Invincible, Together, they return to Thraxa where Invincible is stunned to discover his father is the planet's ruler. Their reunion is a mix of shock, affection, and tension. Nolan, now on the run from the Viltrumite Empire and unable to return to Earth, reveals he has a new family and implores Invincible to help defend Thraxa from Viltrumite threats. In a fierce battle against Viltrumite's forces, Nolan saves Mark but is captured facing execution for his defiance. In their potentially last meeting, Nolan entrusts Mark with his legacy and writings leaving his son to confront the complexities of their family's fate and the looming dangers ahead. Which brings us to the end of the first part of season 2. And this concludes this deep dive character session of Superhero Club. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm your host Stephanie Williams. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes of Superhero Club. And remember, you can catch up with the first half of season two streaming now on Prime Video. And don't forget the second half of Invincible season two returns to Prime Video on March 14th. Mm -hmm.